All righty. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's so nice to be here after three years and meeting finally everybody in person. I missed it so much. Uh, my name is Antonio. I'm an engineer for Red Hat, uh, where I've been working for the past eight years, taking care of containers, OpenShift, and now Peter Falls, the Edge. Right? Um, so today we're going to talk about resiliency at the edge, um, who we are. So there I wanted to put a team picture, but I basically meet my team now. So, you know, we've been working together for three years, but uh, uh, no picture together in real life. So we are the team building Route for Edge. Uh, we also maintain Fedora IoT along with the upstream community, and we develop all the uh, technologies for the edge, like FDO, Greenboot, which is the topic of, the, of this presentation, uh, and uh, all the parts in Image Builder that makes it possible to actually build uh, Rel for Edge. I lied, this is my team. You can see a couple of funny faces, like Micah's there. You gave, per <laughs> you gave permission to share this. Uh, so this is my amazing team. Uh, so as I said, we built the operating system for the edge, or you know, that's what we call it. And uh, Rel for Edge is built using Image Builder. It can be Fedora and Rel. Um, the team focuses on both in the day-to-day -day, uh, with a push to do upstream first and more upstream in general. All of the Rel for Edge system is based on OS3 and RPM OS3, and it runs on those tiny devices like the Fitlet 2, the Intel NUC, um, and it's, uh, it's made of a curated, curated package set, uh, things that we only need at the edge or things that we don't need and we just remove. That's the last line, it's lean and secure. You don't want a huge attack surface. Uh, you want the system to run with minimal amount of RAM and CPUs. So that's how, uh, that's how we've designed it. Um, so before talking about resiliency, the way we build rel for edge is we create an OS3 container commit with Image Builder that basically just build uh, the OS3 layout that then we serve uh, as, a, as a remote repository to Image Builder. Image Builder, what it does is with that simple blueprint, uh, that creates the OS3 commit and then when we serve that, we can build an installer like Anaconda or the Simplified Provisioner you can build a raw image, you can build pretty much whatever you want. Kudos to the OS build folks here. I, I've seen Aquila somewhere, yeah. Um, after you have this artifact, like it can be a raw image, it can be an installer, can be uh, Anaconda itself, uh, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is basically flash the OS to a device. That's the provisioning part, which I have another talk after this uh, to talk about. Uh, as part of that, as part of the flashing, uh, of provisioning itself, there is some sort of tagging that you want to do to the device in order to later identify it and things like that. And then with these tiny devices, the, the edge use cases is you uh, provision the device with an operating system. The analogy here is when you go and buy a Windows laptop, uh, that stuff goes out of the manufacturer with Windows pre-installed, but it's not activated. So this is pretty much the same uh, you have a bunch of devices, all provisioned with Ralph for Edge, and then at the end, you're gonna ship those anywhere in the world. This is IoT, so this stuff can be a light bulb, can be a sensor at the top of the Everest, uh, anything that is tiny or not really tiny uh, that we don't have easy access to. Um, just like the the in? Yeah, just like the the exactly. Uh, yeah, it can go to space too. Uh, that's what Peter is uh, saying. Uh, and then once it's uh, at the Everest, somebody's just gonna power it on and it does onboarding. Uh, some of my team members are gonna do the onboarding part <coughs> of a rel for edge uh, system, so make sure you sign up for your NS Aritas talk. Uh, and at that point, this device is at the top of the Mount Everest, uh, it's up and running, all is good, sending sensors data back to the, uh, to the I don't know, main data centers or whatever, crunching data on the actually there on the mountain. Uh, so whoever shipped the device to the Everest, like actually walking up there, uh, just power it on and go back to the office. Like th that is easy, right? Uh, now this is day two operations then. So the device needs uh, an upgrade. 
So that is the blueprint that creates an upgrade, and it's still an OS3 container commit that we build using Image Builder. In that example, I just added Nano and that file. Uh, and then we're gonna serve this commit, build the upgraded OS3 commit, and then what we're gonna do is basically just run RPM OS3 upgrade and then reboot it. Once we run RPM OS3 upgrade, we get this kind of output, and it says just run systemctl reboot, uh, and everything is gonna be fine. You're gonna be booting into the next uh, version of the operating system. Uh, this is cool, right? Um, so what can possibly go wrong with, uh, with these uh, scenarios, basically? So, you know, all upgrades don't always go as planned. So probably the, the worst nightmare is something like this. Like you have a device at the top of the Mount Everest and it's like, oh my God, I can't connect to it anymore. Uh, that may be an issue, right? So there are a couple of solutions uh, for this. The very silly and simple one is to send somebody to the Everest. It's probably expensive, uh, tiring. For those who know that Noemi, uh, my partner, she gets six, six every time. So and that's not even the Everest, of course. It's super sunny there. Uh, so somebody has to go physically there and debug the device, which you can imagine is probably not going to happen. It's really unlikely. Uh, you have these tiny devices everywhere in the world or in space, and you want these to run smoothly, to upgrade, to continue working, to run the applications that um, have been deployed on these devices. So everything has to be uh, smooth. So this is not going to work. Poor Noemi, this is not going to work. Uh, so that's when uh, Greenboot came into the picture. So some mystery here. Greenboot is a, it's basically a tool that makes it possible in an RPM OS3, an OS3 system to go back to the previous deployment if there are any issue uh, in, the, in the upgraded deployment. I'm assuming some familiarity with RPM OS3. Basically you have two deployments at all times and when you upgrade, after you reboot, you go into the new one. With Greenboot it's possible that if you add some check and the new one doesn't work or doesn't <coughs> behave the way you want, it goes back to the, uh, to the working deployment so that any upgrade that goes wrong, you have a chance to revert it and then maybe debug it further or ship another upgrade uh, and things like that. So Fedora has been created, uh, Greenboot has been created as part of the Google Summer of Code in 2018. Uh, 2018? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole idea uh, has been created and led by Peter Robinson here. Uh, Christian Glombeck was the intern working on uh, Greenboot at the time. Also Dusty Mabe and uh, Jonathan LeBon helped him as mentors too. Uh, and again, this has been part of Fedora IoT because Peter saw the need to have unattended rollbacks on these devices because otherwise, again, you need to send money back to the Everest, unlikely. Uh, the whole project is, has been designed around RPM OS3 because of course in a normal system, it's not as easy to ship an update, roll it back without any disruption. That's also unlikely. Uh, and it, it has been made to work uh, with Grub. Uh, so right now we just support Grub, but any UFI, um, you know, boot system or whatever can be made to work. Like if you have ideas, if you want to contribute, uh, feel free. And so with these two pieces in mind, RPM OS3 and Grub, Christian created the very first implementation in 2018. Uh, and so how Greenboot works is pretty easy. Uh, somebody runs RPM OS3 upgrade and system CTL reboot. Uh, when RPM OS3 upgrade is called, Greenboot sets some variable in, uh, in Grub. And after that, that I'm gonna explain in a, in a little bit, and then we reboot. So at the next boot, Greenboot starts a couple of health checks, what we call health checks, and based on those, it's gonna run a couple of boot status script, meaning, okay, the deployment is okay, now I'm gonna send an email to an, an, um, an administrator maybe, or somebody saying everything is okay, or, you know, worst case, the upgrade doesn't work and we need to roll back. Uh, yeah, the last one is uh, rollback can also happen, maybe you can have transient failures, so you, wanna, you may wanna retry a couple of times or how many times you want the new deployment. Maybe it's a 
you know, network hiccup or something. So in Grub, this is, you know, how Christian made it work and how it's, uh, it is today. There's Christian, it's outside. Um, it's uh, basically leveraging a couple of Grub functionalities um, like setting variables. There are two main variables that drive all the green boot um, uh, processes. The first one is uh, the boot counter. The boot counter is set when the upgrade is done, but before the reboot happens. Once the boot counter is, um, is set and we reboot, every time that the deployment fails, we're gonna decrease it until it's negative. That's the signal that we need to roll back. So hopefully it's, uh, it's, it's super easy. Um, and the other variable is boot success. Before the upgrade, we set that to zero, and then if the new deployment works, we're gonna set that to one. You know, those two variables basically drives all the green boot operations. We shipped some uh, template in grub.d just to make all of this logic works, as I've explained it. Hopefully it's clear. Uh, two main one, it's a fallback counting, basically just decreases the boot counter, and the other is boot success. It's zero before rebooting. It, it's reset um, to one once the upgrade goes well. This is, this is all green boot. Green boot is uh, a couple of scripts and many at this point, system D services. Uh, it has a state machine-like operation model, so every time it checks the variables and where it is at that moment and based it on that act. So the first service that we have is the green boot grub2 set counter service. This is the one that is directly wired to OS3 so that when OS3 runs an upgrade, well, you run an upgrade and OS3 takes care of that, it's gonna fire that service. Green boot intercept it and say, okay, it's time to set boot success to zero and boot counter to whatever the, you know, uh, the retry, uh, the actual retries you wanna do uh, for that specific boot. And then there is green boot telcheck, which is the it, it's the main service, it, it's uh, ordered before boot complete dot target, and what that does is running the custom health check that everybody can actually add to green boot in order to say this deployment is good, this deployment is not good. If it's not clear, I'm gonna show an example uh, later with a demo so that it becomes really clear. So if, if the health check service passes, boot complete is reached as a target, of course, and then there is another service setting the success variable in grub and uh, unsetting the boot counter grub variable. Um, and then if everything goes well with the new deployment, there is a further option to run additional script that's in the green D directory. Again, it can be an email to Peter saying, okay, the deployment is good, uh, all good. Deploy it to the space. Uh, if it fails instead, there is the whole roll, rollback mechanism run by Redboot how to reboot that service. And it does, as, as the slide says, a series of checks to determine if there is a requirement for manual intervention, because that can happen too. Otherwise, it just reboots the system and try again if reboot has been made, has been configured to retry. And when uh, there is, when the alt check fails, then the red dot the scripts run and at that point, you can still send an email to Peter. At this point, you know, you have a filter uh, saying, okay, no, this deployment doesn't really work. You don't want to boot uh, there. Maybe it's, you know, create another one. What do you want to send to the enterprise? I could, uh, I'm gonna send you an email. Um, yeah, so this is the very basic um, directory structure for green boot uh, itself. Uh, the, as I said, the required.d script under Etsy green boot check is the one with scripts that must pass. It means that if you boot into a new deployment and any of this script fails, then the whole boot is marked as not good and what green boot does is either retry or just RPM OS3 rollback to the previous deployment. The wanted.d script directory is a uh, it's a directory that holds scripts that may fail, can be failures that are okay to happen in a new deployment, but then maybe, you know, uh, network for instance, probably better in required.d, and then in wanted you have something else assuming network has been working, you know, to further the bug. 
And as I explained, green.d and red.d are just uh, boot status script. If it's green, run this. If it's red, run the other. Yeah, this is, this is the configuration. I know it's uh, pretty slim, but this is the configuration uh, variables that we, uh, we implemented in Greenboot. The max boot attempts, it's the one that uh, takes care of rebooting until that number. And the other two are part of a, uh, a uh, script. Uh, yeah, the other watchdog. Um, but I'm, not, I'm really not gonna get into that because the watchdog is probably a whole new topic. But those are the ones that we support today. The first one is probably the most important. And in my demo, it's configured to three, so you will see the virtual machine rebooting three times. Um, I don't know how much time, 48, so 10, 50 minutes, okay. Uh, this is a, all the alt checks are scripts, bash scripts. I know it's bad, we're working on that, uh, not necessarily bad. Uh, and this, this is what you actually write in order to have something run at the next boot and then mark the boot as a, a good boot and then keep the deployment or something that has to be rolled back. This, you know, this is bash pretty easy. There is, if there is that file, we're gonna fail and we're not booting into that deployment. Uh, if there is not, everything is good. We stay in the new deployment. And the demo. Uh, we have a machine somewhere. Can you see? Yes, awesome. So this demo is basically uh, demoing what I've been saying and we're gonna, well, I've built already the, the upgrade and what we're gonna do together is run the upgrade and reboot. I didn't trust the network to do all of that. So I did this in advance. You can see here that so right now I'm at this version, market 5.7. Uh, this is normal uh, RPM OS3 things, mechanism. So we are booted into this deployment. I've built instead a, an upgrade. No. I've built an upgrade based on this light, this one, uh, where you can see that I've added that file, which is the one that is going to fail. Uh, you know, it's easy, it's, a, it's really silly as a demo, but it explains how this works. So the new upgrade is gonna contain that file that it's gonna make the new deployment fail. So pretty easy there. I built that using uh, image builder, and if we follow RPM OS3 commands, I can ask for the upgrade. And you can see we're gonna go an upgrade to 6.7. There is a new package added. This is how S3 works. It's just nano, if you remember the, the blueprint. And <coughs> so now what is left to do is just reboot the system. Oh, actually, we need to update. Does it work? It works. So right now it's upgrading. You can see we added the nano package. So this, is a, this can be a normal upgrade during normal operation at the Mount Everest. So somebody needs something, a new customer application, I don't know, a new sensor, new sensor data, or you know, a program to send back sensor data, whatever. It can be anything. Uh, so at this point, what we're gonna do is just systemctl reboot. What this does is basically going to try and boot into the new OS3 deployments. Um, Hopefully it's visible, but it's not really important. There were two boot entries that have, that have been shown. Um, there is some issue there. Oh, time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so well, I'll start from here since this is not gonna work anymore. I, I prepared for this, but this can happen. Uh, so, after I rebooted, what was gonna really happen, I'm sorry for this, is you know, two boot entries were shown, 
It, those were the old deployments and the new deployments. So we were trying to boot, this is the new deployment. As soon as you are in the new deployment, Green Boot runs, check that um, else check that I've shown you before, basically checking if that file is there. And if it's there, Green Boot is gonna run and reboot the system. And the next boot for three times, we're gonna still have the two boot entry uh, where we retry the new deployment. After that is done and we are at minus one with the boot counter available, uh, then we're gonna just roll back to the old deployments. It's super silly, it didn't work, but yeah. So that, that was basically the demo I wanted to show. Um, I'm sorry for this. And 53. All right, so yeah. So what's next for Green Boot? Uh, we have a couple of points that we want to we wanna enhance in the future. Not everybody like bash scripts. So what we're going to do right now is rewriting the core in Rust and then perhaps enhancing the API so that everybody can drop any executable and you know, base it maybe on exit code 01, things like that. Uh, anybody can write their own health uh, check the way they want with the programming language that they want. What we're gonna do next too is having better RPM OS3 integration. Right now we're basically hijacking the way RPM OS3 does the different boots but we wanna do better there, starting in Fedora IoT. We already started talking with the CoreOS folks, uh, the, you know, the folks maintaining RPM OS 3.2 to actually do that. Uh, there, is, there are some hiccups with Greenboot itself and RPM OS 3. The biggest one to me is that ETC is writable. That means that if somebody messes something up under ETC uh, while a system is running and then run an upgrade, that wouldn't make the Greenboot health check fail, uh, then Greenboot is gonna just uh, you know, be fooled by that, saying, okay, this is actually not booting and it's not green. So what it's gonna do is just roll back. And this opens for you know, all sort of attacks too. Maybe you don't want, maybe you're upgrading because there is a CVE, uh, but again, can be fooled and it's not good for security either. And uh, lastly, we have some actually live users of Greenboot, the most notable is Microshift. They are uh, implementing health checks to make sure that they can go back and forth with Microshift itself, which is you know, OpenShift and things like that. So this is the future of Greenboot. If you have, again, any idea, uh, I have a couple of links here, starting from, yes, starting from the actual repo on GitHub, and then the whole explanation by Christian Glombeck who created all of this. And then I dropped a link also to OS Build Composer, since it, you know, the way we, we actually build all rel for edge artifacts in RPM OS 3, of course. On time? Yeah, okay, questions? Yeah? Yeah, yes, Peter. <laughs> Are we handling that? You know, yeah. we're not handling that. No, we're not. Basically. So this is, repeat the question, Peter. How do we handle? How, how do we hand forced rollbacks by an attacker yes. to enable them to then you know, attack potential vulnerabilities that have been fixed in the upgrade? Right, so the questions were, Peter already knows the answers, and the answers that we're, we haven't uh, fixed that well, is up. What was the question? Though? Yeah, the question is, how do we prevent somebody from actually forcefully rolling back to something that isn't patched, right? Maybe we are upgrading to something that fixes a CVE, but then with something like this, maybe we are forced to go back and then introduces, of course, a vulnerability in itself. Uh, we're working on this. Uh, there have been a couple of ideas too. Uh, yeah. Probably the, the RPM OS3 integration is one of the things that we first have to take care of it's in order to, it's, com it's complex, it's a complex uh, topic. This may be a controversial question since this is a Red Hat conference, but what are your plans on supporting other ways of delivering software other than RPMs? Because I've, I've been more than once in a situation when a new release of a Docker container or a snap broke uh, uh, an edge machine. Okay, a well machine? No. Sorry? A 
well-forged machine? No. It's not uh, a general machine. So I, and that, and that, let me repeat the question. The, the way we deal with, so that's unrelated to green bean in general. Yeah. The way we deal with that is you run that in a container on the base operating system. Okay, but there are scenarios, I actually had one, when a new version of a container can, you know, affect hardware or, or other, yeah. or affect the machine in other ways. So. Yeah, so we would roll back the container and we would deal with that. And that, that would be independent of, 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 of the, the system. system. Yes. Um, yes. We, we, we can, we can, we can deal with that within like the health check scripts. Yeah, possibly. So, is that something that might happen? So, yes. And the, the, the safe thing that we used to do when I worked in OpenShift with the MCO was any change on the RETC would, uh, and of course we can do that in OpenShift because it's, the hardware is free more or less. Basically every change in RETC triggers a reboot so that you make sure that at the next reboot, if it's working, you, you know, the change itself, you, you know, be besides. The exactly. Yes, but we don't have the ability And besides RPM OS 3 and Fedora, there have been a couple of solutions like using better FS snapshots uh, to say, okay, this is just a config layer, as Peter said, which is different from RPM OS 3 config layers, OS 3 config layers, but they, you know, the solution is probably placed there. Yeah, but we're not completely aware of that. Yeah, I know. It's a pretty obvious question. But um, I'm not sure if it solves the case of moving into an older unit, but it does strengthen the verification yeah. all the way up the, the commit that you're moving into. It's just an interesting area. Yeah. If people are interested in that, they can go to the Yes. So if. Uh, the, the comment was around ComposeFS. I don't know if you heard, if everybody heard. Uh, can be a potential solution to this. If you don't know what's going some, some pieces of ComposeFS, yes. Yeah, uh, when you were showing the demo and the need to be hanged out, yeah. uh, I assume reboot would uh, hit like this and uh, give up after some time and uh, yeah. throw Well, except in that case, because unfortunately, I think the machine that I was using runs a RHEL version that had a bug. So that was j basically just retrying forever because that's how the ignition uh, service is made to work on first boot. It wasn't first boot, that's a bug. Uh, otherwise, yes, if there is anything that hangs and at some point reboot, then reboot will still work. So I don't understand what the difference is. Why this is like the ignition fetch uh, routine is running forever. So that never, s that never ends. So, so yeah. the system would not detect it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a, that's a good point. Perhaps something to consider into you know, new features uh, about Grim, maybe. Hey, Tomas. If you're running RPM OS 3, like, uh, I don't know, Silver Brew, Raw White, yes.
it's, it's very bound to how our PM OS3 works. That's it? I oh, know. Yes, the integration point is, oh yeah, the only integration point uh, between Greenboot and RPM OS3 is when the grub variables are set. Uh, yes, right now, uh, as I, yeah, I mean, what's next, there is better RPM OS3 integration. That means we're gonna make that link more robust and not just rely on the OS3 finalized staged that run after somebody run RPM OS3 upgrade, because that's, they can be flucky too. Sometimes, so rarely, you can miss that too. Perhaps, yes. Yep. Anything else? On time? On time. <laughs>